the number one long form writer that helps SEOs outrank competition at the click of a button using real time research and NLP. Start ranking content today with content at scale.ai. Wix Studio, one end to end web creation platform for your agency to deliver exceptional work with absolute efficiency. Hi, I'm Sally, an SEO consultant with almost a decade in SEO. And I'm going to be talking to you about ways we can use log file analysis as insight into our SEO and content strategy. Why log file analysis? Well, I was comparing a few different um, enterprise platforms. And one of these platforms didn't actually have any log file analysis. When I asked why, I was told nobody really knows how to use log file analysis anyway. That's bullshit, right? <laughs> but in case you need more information on log file analysis, let's dig into it. Now, like uh, Alex has covered, log file analysis have a wealth of information. The key parts are where requests are being made from, which is really important. Is it your target territories, for example? Who is making the request? Is it human? Is it bot? Is it the search engine? And what is being requested? And all this forms data we can use to inform our teams in identifying what pages are being crawled by search engines or what proportion of your site is being crawled by search engines if it's a large site, and how quickly content is crawled and indexed. As I said, this goes back to how important sections of your website are. So if you've got really important user intent content, that's going to be crawled a lot more frequently than other pieces of content that might not meet user intent as well. And how frequently priority pages are crawled? I've got cartoons all the way through this, by the way. <laughs> so in terms of our priority pages, we're talking about your transaction pages, your lead generation pages, your middle of the funnel pages, right down to those awareness pages, so top of the funnel, where we're targeting users who aren't aware of the solution to their problem yet. And it's important in mapping all of these when you're thinking about what are the most important pages on the website. And we can also identify search engines crawling the wrong pages, such as 404s, redirects, canonicalized URLs, and pages we just don't care about. Among websites, there's usually lots of content we just don't care about that somebody thought was a great idea one day, much like these cartoons that nobody cares about. There's also pages that are rarely or never crawled at all. It's really important in identifying these um, if they're important pages that have been listed above especially, and that can be because of crawl depth. So like Alex mentioned, Crawl depth can play an important part in what Google is actually crawling. Or if it's a large site, it could be because of crawl budget. Um, a good sign that you're struggling with crawl budget is a really high proportion of discovered, not indexed content on Google Search Console. Duplication is another one. And it's not always canicalized duplication. There can be duplication on site that's never been picked up on. And the marketing team may not even be aware that it's an issue and there's another lesser important page out there ranking. And content quality is another big one. Um, so that could be thin content, that could be AI generated content. Um, it could even be keyword stuffing. Page speed rarely plays a part in why a page isn't crawled, but if there is an excessive load time, Google's going to think oh, it's not access accessible, we're just going to move on. And of course, orphan pages, if there's no links pointing to it anywhere, search engines aren't going to know that they exist. 
You can also use log file analysis to test and analyze what works in your niche. Um, one of the ways you can do this is if you've got an idea of where page rank is on your site, that link juice is on your site, does it match up with what Google's crawling? So, and this is a really interesting point because not all backlinks are created equal. Not all backlinks are actually going to play a part in getting your content ranked. So you can play about a bit there in finding out what backlinks are working and what content it's helping getting crawled. There's also trends between word count and crawling. Now it's important to point out that Google doesn't care about word count, but it might highlight content on your site that's doing really well and a particular template or a, a particular viewpoint that's working with your content that Google likes. And again, that's probably going back to user intent, but if there's a set up that your content team are using that's working really well. It's usually highlighted in a trend with word count. You can also look at uh, changing meta tags and headers, especially if something isn't getting indexed. So if you're really struggling with that, testing different meta tags, and different headers, different components on a page, something as simple as adding the contents to the top of the page with anchor links can really change how that content's viewed. And we can also look at tracking the impact of cannibalization projects. The image is missing for this one, I'm not sure why, but... <laughs> um, so, this is a really big project on websites, and it's not just about looking at what pages, the one page that is being crawled by Google, it's that whole group of competing pages, when are they crawled, and when has those cha changes been picked up. And cannibalization can be a really difficult topic because you'll find, if you've ever dealt with a cannibalization project, that sometimes that keyword isn't even on the page, and yet you've got a whole group of pages competing for the same um, keyword, and it's got nothing to do with site links or anything. So looking at your server log files and looking at where you might be going right or wrong is really useful in pushing that project along. Another big one is implementing server-side rendering. That's quite interesting because I've worked on projects where we've implemented server-side rendering and immediately seen rankings go up massively. I've worked on projects where we've implemented server-side rendering and nothing's happened at all. And it's mainly because Google's rendering that content before we've implemented server-side rendering. So, oh yeah, no, Google might not be rendering this content and you might be looking at tools that are showing that Google's are only rendering part of the page. But actually, when you implement it and you look at when Google's crawling your page in comparison to what it's actually doing, um, what it's actually doing to your rank and your visibility, you might find that um, it's not a good project to go ahead with on the rest of the site. Updating schema and testing which schema works, which schema actually gets you the best at, uh, click through rate. Obviously, you can speed this up a bit by looking at when Google's crawling those uh, pages and using Google Search Console data to, manage, to monitor performance post-crawl. And going back to backlinks, so what backlinks are actually pushing performance? Uh, it's a really interesting question, so really good insight to see when Google's crawling post getting that backlink and what the performance gain is out of it. Also, improving page performance, it's a massive project, right? Huge. When do you actually see the results from it? So, monitoring again. When has Google crawled? What have the, the results been from that? Is it an increase in rankings? Is it actually looking at user data, a higher conversion rate? And you can also see the impact of social influence and popularity, especially with newer content that hasn't ranked yet. So we're talking about the actual popularity of people sharing that content and it gaining some momentum outside of organic and how that impacts 
your rank in organic SERPs. And there's also user-centric behavior that we can monitor through log file analysis. This can be stuff like comparing whether the mobile desktop ratio that Google's crawling or your target search engine is crawling matches up with your target audience. So if 80% of your target audience are in mobile and Google's only crawling 20% of your site via Googlebot Mobile, you've probably got a bit of a problem there because it's only ranking that proportion. You can also look at pages visited by end users in comparison to pages being crawled by Google and how that's matching up. And also, you know, is it actually matching up with your content strategy as well? And you can look at what response times users are getting. And just a few things outside of that strategy, there's a couple of other things you can look for. This can include redirects and 404s outside of the site structure. So these are things that you won't pick up on your crawl. They might be flagged in Google Search Console, but you're not sure if Google's actually still crawling that. Log file analysis can be really useful in highlighting whether it is an issue for you. And one of the ones that Alex um, referred to earlier is identifying different response codes to user agents. So it's really important if, you're get, if your user agents, like Google, are getting a different response code to when you're crawling your site with something like Screaming Frog. Another little thing you can do, and this is more a web administrator, but you can look at why there's 500 errors on site. And log file analysis can tell you whether this could be a CDN error, or there's a particularly large file that's causing the problem, or if you're lucky enough, it's really high traffic. You can also separate the users from the bots. Um, so Google Analytics doesn't give you the full picture. There's loads of bot traffic in there, and you'll actually see it in the referral if you're ever really digging into that data. So log file analysis gives you a true picture of how many users you're getting to site and where you're getting them. And finally, you can identify spam-generated URLs. Now, you might also identify this through um, a site search on Google, or you might um, identify it through Google Search Console in a bunch of called um, discovered not indexed um, pages, but it doesn't always come up. So if your site's been hacked, um, you might not know about it for a long time. Log file analysis will tell you whether you've got um, a lot of spam generated URLs, particularly um, common on WordPress sites. Thank you. Monthly reporting making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools. 